Hello viewers and welcome to a new STM32 World, probably a short video today. Today I am going to talk about USB enumeration in quite some detail. Um, so uh, if you are not interested in USB at all, um, now is probably a good time to leave this video, but if you are interested in USB. This is a fairly important topic, so hang on to the end. As usual, please like and subscribe. And I love getting comments below, so um, if you have any comments, please let me hear them uh, by all means. So let me uh, get smaller and let me show you here what I have. Uh, okay, so here we have the serial output of my relay board, which I have covered in some other videos. Uh, this is a board, it's got a USB, sorry, STM32F402, which is a Chinese market only equivalent of an STM32F401. Uh, and I have a ST-Link connected and I have a USB connected. Here is the output for the serial of the ST-Link. And here we have the output of my kernel lock on my workstation, which is connected to this. So let's try it. Uh, you couldn't see that at all because I had this. So let's go back to this one. So... Um, Actually, let's uh, do another window here. Uh, I had the same. So let's try to run a probe, a ST-Link probe that will reset the device and you will see what happens over on the right side. The USB disconnects and then it finds a new USB full speed device and that device then identify itself as an HIT device. Now, if I boot this up in uh, bootloader mode, you will see that there it comes up as a different kind of device, but the same pattern, it will disconnect and then it will identify itself as something else. Now, that identification is called enumeration. And what is happening here is that the host will see that a new device show up and then it will ask that device to identify itself. Very modern. <laughs> that, <laughs> and it can identify itself. Now, it is important to understand that USB, there is uh, two concepts that is necessary to understand. USB is a kind of a master-slave protocol. There's a master, which is called the host in USB lingo, and then there is devices that you plug into that master. So normally, if you look at your PC, will have a number of USB plugs on it. They are uh, host devices, and no, they are hosts. <laughs> and then you plug in devices, and devices would be like a keyboard or a whatever, a keyboard, mouse, uh, USB cameras, etc., etc., etc. So that, that's the architecture of USB. So the big question here is how does USB actually identify that a new device has been plugged in? Let's look at uh, this. So if we look at a typical USB um, circuitry, in this case, uh, it is USB-C. Uh, but you will see that there is uh, two data lines, D plus and D minus, and then there is typically a power line and a ground line down here. There's some extra in USB-C, namely these two CC lines, which are used to request more power, but never mind those, let's ignore those. So normally you will have this, the D plus and the D minus line. And um, well, in this particular case, you will see that there is a pull-up resistor up to 3.3 volt, 1.5 K resistor that pulls up the D plus line. Now, that pull-up is absolutely essential for a USB device to be 
recognize because it is in fact how the host detects that a new device has been plugged in or indeed unplugged because that pull up disappears and then it will say oh there's a disconnect and and it's as simple as that uh, so that pull up the sister is essentially now why is it i mean you see a lot of um a lot of uh uh, the, the schematics with this TM32 where that pull up resistor is not there. How does that work? Now, if we look at the official documentation, there is an application note 4879 with introduction to USB hardware and PCB guidelines using STM32 MCUs. If you look at that document, uh, you will see a few pages down that there is a Difference in USB is supported over the range of STM32 uh, MCUs. There are some that are just a universal serial bus USB full speed device interface. These devices, these MCUs can only act as a device, not a host. Then you have some which is called on the go. That means they can be a host or they can be a device. Uh, and, and that is the two alternatives. Then also you have full speed and high speed and yada, yada, yada. But the important thing here is that whether it is an on-the-go interface, which can be both a host and a device, or a device-only interface. Now, if we look down at the table here, you will see that, for example, the STM32F103 of Blue Pill fame which is the reason you see this is a only that means that it is a full speed device it doesn't have host um, and because of that you will see this column over here whether there's an embedded pull-up resistor on the usb d plus line and you will see this one has a footnote too which is explained down here to be compliant with electric must be pulled up. So you must add an external pull up resistor. So roughly speaking, you will have to check the data sheet, but roughly speaking, STM32 MCUs that can run in only device mode will need an external pull up resistor. Whereas STM32 MCUs that can support both will have that pull up resistor embedded in the device so you don't have to worry about it so essentially a schematics like this would be matching this is in fact taken from my um one of my my green pill board i think it was uh, and and blue pill boards they will have that 1.5k and it has to be fairly precisely 1.5k uh, I think I've gotten away with a 1K resistor because I didn't have any 1.5K lying around. Uh, but it, it has to be around that region for this to be working. So if we look at this, uh, I have running here the F402, which is a 401. This one has got the built-in uh, built um, uh, pull-up resistor. So when you are restarting the MCU, it will detect, the, the host will detect, oh, something happened. And that is because that pull-up resistor disappears for a short while, and then it comes back and it starts the enumeration process. Uh, I have sometimes called that renumeration, but it's actually probably should be called re-enumeration uh, to be correct. Now, there are different ways this could be implemented. And uh, if you want to trigger this renumeration, you see the problem is if you have that pull up resistor all the time, how do you uh, trigger that renumeration? Because if you just restart the MCU, press reset, it will not signal to the host that something has happened and it needs to be enumerated again. Now, ST themselves in their ST link devices make a rather complicated uh, circuits like this uh, let's see that so basically 
on the D plus line, they do have that 1.5K, but that 1.5K uh, is controlled by an NPN uh, transistor uh, up to the fifth. So in order for this to be at 3.3 volt, the base needs to be high, higher than that anyway. Uh, and that's why they have this circuitry over here that pulls up the, this uh, to, and, and well, it works, but I honestly don't understand why they bother to do this. And if anybody can explain that to me, please do explain down in the comment because I'm not mocking them. I just don't see the purpose because if we look at uh, where was that? Oh, well, we had it here. This circuitry. Now, the two data lines, D plus and D minus, go straight into a, a, a GPIO. And what I'm thinking is, I mean, if you, even if you have that 1.5 volt uh, K resistor here, if you yank this one down to ground, there will be a current going there, but 1.5K is well within safety limit. I think it comes up to about less than 10, uh, 10 milliamps that goes in there. So if you briefly yank this down, down, it will trigger exactly the same effects and cause the device to renuminate. And if we look at some firmware I actually wrote a while back uh, for a WS28, uh, um, one of those uh, 2812B uh, back in the day. Uh, if we look at the code generated, it will call MX USB device in it. And if I go in and look, I have actually implemented this. You have, as usual, you have a user code begin, user code end, and then it goes through this initialization of the USB device. So what I'm doing, and this works. You don't need that circuitry that uh, ST make in their ST link devices. You can see what I'm doing up here is I'm simply manually initializing the uh, the the GPIO A pin 12, and I set the output mode to push pull. I add the pull down <laughs> resistor, and I initialize it like that. Uh, I write to pin. Uh, reset, meaning I pull it low and I wait for 50 milliseconds and then I just continue. USB in it will initialize the hardware. They they want to have the hardware initialized and that's all good. That's all fine. So adding this little snippet of code, and I think I actually put this, didn't I, in my, yes, it is here. So something like that. Uh, I, I This one was a little more elaborate. You don't need the last pin here because that will happen with the USB initialization. So this one should trigger a re-enumeration on even STM32 MCUs without the built-in pull-up resistor. Now, the devices with built-in uh, pull-up resistor like the F4 series that I normally use, um, and even actually, I'm, I'm uh, even the one I'm uh, where is it? The one I'm using here, which is the uh, 402 slash 401. They have the built-in uh, pull-up resistors, and in those MCUs, you don't need to bother with this. This is only relevant for the devices without a built-in pull-up resistor and if we look at the application node most of them have that built-in but there are a few that does not uh, in the f3 series there's a few right and uh, yeah well f3 series and f1 series there are a few MCUs that does not have that built-in. And the way you can identify it in the data sheet, because I'm not sure the pull-up resistor is actually mentioned in the data sheet, but if you look at the data sheet, if it supports device only, 
you should assume that you need a pull-up resistor. If it can be device and host in firmware, you cannot have that pull-up resistor because that pull-up resistor cannot be there if we are talking about uh, host mode. So in order to this to be toggled, you cannot have that one outside sitting there because it needs to be controlled by the MCU. And that's why this is the way it is. So that is about it. Very brief. Uh, go to my STM32 World Wiki and there will be pages on enumeration, re-enumeration of USB device and it will all be explained there. I even think if we go down and look at the my ST-Link page, my DIY uh, ST-Link page, I think this is also mentioned in quite some detail here. This is, by the way, uh, the ST-Link uh, schematics and you will see they have that enumeration uh, circuitry down here, which I don't understand. I really don't understand it. And I think I mentioned that down here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, I mean, I can see what they are trying to do there. Uh, that's pretty obvious, but I just think it is absolutely not necessary. I, I cannot understand why they are doing this. Now, I actually don't know. Um, maybe this is worth another video. I don't know if that uh, 1.5k pull-up resistor can be controlled from a register or it's just part of the USB peripheral. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm actually restarting the MCU and that definitely triggers the re-enumeration. Uh, I'm not sure if you can actually trigger this from software and maybe that's the only explanation I can come up with. If they want to be able to do this renumeration, re-enumeration without actually restarting the peripheral, I don't know if that's the case. I don't know why that would be necessary because you can just restart the peripheral anyway, even without restarting the MCU. So, I think that's about enough. This was fairly short and uh, I hope if you are using USB that this would have explained a topic that might otherwise have been confusing. So that's about it as usual. Well, I hope you liked and subscribed uh, if you actually got anything out of this video. Uh, and as usual, have a wonderful rest of the day.